India is a country rich in its traditions. Age old traditions. Many of the knowledge traditions of India are preserved in written form. And there are more than a million handwritten manuscripts in India preserving the Indian legacy of ancient Vedic knowledge. Yoga is an ancient tradition of knowledge of life which emphasizes direct experience rather than philosophical conjecture. It is one of the six systems of Indian philosophy. There is a rich literature of yoga going back thousands of years. The three main texts of yoga are the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, the Shiva Sutra, and the Patanjali Yoga Sutra. The oldest text of yoga is the Yoga Sutra of Patanjali. We don't actually know when the seer Patanjali lived. It could have been many, many thousands of years ago. But the Yoga Sutra was already an established authoritative text 5,000 years ago at the time of the great Mahabharata war when sage Veda Vyasa wrote a commentary on it. Vyasa is the author of the Mahabharata, the 18 Purana, and the Brahma Sutra. And he wrote an excellent detailed commentary on the Patanjali Yoga Sutra. It is through Vyasa's exalted commentary that the Yoga Sutra have come down to us. There are four chapters called Padas, dealing with Samadhi, principles of practice, development of higher powers, and the state of enlightenment, the completely integrated, self-sufficient state of life in unity consciousness. This is the text which describes the eight limbs of yoga, yama, niyama, pratyahara, asana, pranayama, dharana, dhyana, and samadhi. This is the source text on which the principles and practice of Maharishi's TM City program is based. And this is also the source of the knowledge of yogic flying. There are 195 sutras written in the ancient Sanskrit language. They are very concise, pithy aphorisms. In Maharshi Vedic science, we learn that the first expression of a text contains the wholeness of knowledge of the text. And the last expression is a summary of the whole. Let's listen to the recitation of the beginning and ending sutras of the Patanjali Yoga Sutra. Atha Yogaha Prathamam Sutram Atha Yoga Nushasanam Antima Sutram Purushartha Shunyanam Gunanam Prati Prasavah Kaivalyam Swarupa Pratishtava Chitti Shakti the goal of yoga, explicitly described in Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, is to bring to direct experience the full, infinite potential of man. The key to unfolding the latent, infinite potential inherent in the nervous system of every human being is the direct experience of the infinite. The human nervous system is capable of going beyond limited boundaries of perception and action and experiencing the abstract, infinite totality of life. The direct experience of infinity, of infinite abstraction, is called samadhi in Sanskrit. And we call it, in modern terms, transcendental consciousness. It is a distinct fourth state of consciousness, completely different from waking, dreaming, and sleeping states of consciousness. And this experience is the central teaching of yoga. Marshi explains that transcendental consciousness is unique in that it puts the whole brain to function. Only the experience of transcendental consciousness, he says, makes use of the total brain physiology. Only the experience of transcendental consciousness, the unbounded, infinite, unmanifest field of life, the field of consciousness, 
that only is competent to make full use of the human brain. Only the practice of transcendental meditation makes use of the full brain as proven through so many scientific reports. Only the experience of transcendental consciousness makes use of the full brain. And unless man uses the full brain, partially using the brain, he will be stumbling against partial achievements which will never satisfy him. And this is a description, this is a graphic portrayal of EEG during the practice of Transcendental Meditation on the right and of a non-meditator with eyes open and eyes closed. You see there's very little coherence and then a great deal of coherence of the same person three months later practicing the Transcendental Meditation program. Here is a deeper look at the anatomy of the brain showing the cortex of the brain. Notice that there are wrinkles in the brain like a walnut Notice also that there are four distinct regions of the brain shown here with different colors. The brain is a very precisely designed instrument. Currently there are many, many billions of people on Earth and each one has the exact same structure. There are four broad divisions of the brain and on a finer level there are these folds called gyri and the pattern of the gyri in each brain. It's not random. These are the same for every human being. From each gyrus, bundles of association fibers proceed to their targets, connecting together and unifying the different parts of the brain. Each part of the brain physiology has a specific function or responsibility. And this wiring of the human nervous system is the same everywhere in all races of man, in all cultures, in all religions, now and in all times in the past. Dr. Tony Nader has made the absolutely amazing discovery that the Vedic literature is actually a blueprint of the intelligence of nature which has structured the human physiology. No correlation is more clear and striking than the correlation which he discovered for yoga. Every sutra of yoga corresponds to a specific group of unifying fibers connecting the 195 gyri in the brain. Dr. Nader says, from the correspondence of the structure and function of the Yoga Sutra and the association fibers of the cortex, they have the same structure and both display the mechanisms of unification, integration, and coordination we infer that the subtle variations generated by the sequential activity of the association fibers are the same as the sequentially organized sounds that form a sutra, the sound of a sutra. Therefore, the unifying function of brain physiology is demonstrated in the frequencies of the sequentially placed syllables of each sutra. The association fibers can be called yogic fibers. Let's take a look at these correlations between the sutras and the gyri in the brain. Note that the four regions of the brain correspond to the four chapters of the Yoga Sutra of Patanjali. Dr. Tony Nader has laid out this correlation in exquisite detail, showing which sutra corresponds to the bundle of association fibers originating from each gyrus. These correlations are not random assignments. The knowledge of each sutra has an innate correspondence to the specific role of each gyrus in the functioning of the total brain. Notice that the sutras fit into the gyri. For long gyri, there are long sutras. For short gyri, the sutras are short. This is comprehensive knowledge of the architecture of the cortex with all its connecting fibers, unifying all the parts of the cortex into one grand wholeness, integrated holistic brain functioning. 
There is a precise, detailed correspondence in structure and function between the 195 bundles of association fibers and the 195 sutras of the Yoga Sutra of Patanjali. For this precious and amazing discovery of Veda and Vedic literature in human physiology, Dr. Tony Nader was awarded his weight in gold in 1998. This wonderful research has been published in several volumes, newly released. Yoga is an ancient knowledge of how to put the total brain to function and to experience infinity, totality. Now we see, on the basis of the research of Dr. Tony Nader, that the knowledge of yoga embodied in these 195 sutras is actually not man-made. It is a power shaya. It is enshrined in the structure of the human nervous system, the human brain. Every human being on earth has these 195 gyri in their brain. Every human being has yoga in his or her physiology. Yoga is a universal property of every human being. Yoga is not, an all, not at all an Indian philosophy. It is a science of life that is completely universal. It cannot be limited in time and space. It cannot be consigned to one nation or one culture. It belongs to everyone. The knowledge of yoga is like the blueprint that comes along with the house. This is how the human nervous system is designed. It is designed for the experience of infinity, the experience of samadhi. Every part of the brain has a role to play in the experience of wholeness and the synthesis of all the parts together into one wholeness of universal, unbounded reality of life is described in exquisite detail in the Yoga Sutra, which is in truth the eternal working manual, the instruction book for how to make full use of the human nervous system, how to harness the total brain. This knowledge has been preserved in India, but it belongs to everyone by virtue of everyone having a human nervous system. It's completely appropriate that the United Nations has declared a day of yoga because yoga is a universal property which should be celebrated and applied by every single human being on earth in order to unfold his or her full potential as a human being. This is a great day of celebration. And what we are celebrating is this gift of God to man, the human nervous system, and how to use it in order to unfold heavenly life on earth, life in bliss, harmony, and affluence, the full potential of human existence made practical and lively on earth through the knowledge of yoga. Thanks to the United Nations for organizing this day of celebration of yoga.